What's up guys, how's it going? We are back with another episode. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, what's going on guys? How you been? Anyways, not much to say in this intro. Uh, I'm going back to one of my old games I used to play. A whole bunch of friends, a whole bunch of good guys, and plenty of action, that's for sure. So, I hope you guys enjoy. Without further ado, let's get in those poker hands. All right, guys, time to get in the poker hands, and we start off with a $5 button straddle. Look down and see pocket sevens. Not too bad, and I've got to admit, it feels good putting up YouTube videos again. In case you guys didn't know, you're new to the channel. I took like a month off because my girlfriend's family was in town, and some of them were staying in my office where I had an air mattress, so I didn't want to come and disturb their peace. With all that being said, like pretty much everyone calls is $5. Mill position to raise up to 15. Cutoff calls, I call small blind calls, big blind calls, and under the gun calls as well. So we're going six ways to a flop with everyone calling $15. Yeah, there's like 90 bucks in the flop already. And hey, 90 bucks, 90 bucks. It's not that bad. Flop comes out, speaking of not bad, it's not that bad either. It comes out two, three, four with two clubs. So somehow, some way, we have flopped an over pair on this board, which is very hard to do with pocket sevens, but that's where we find ourselves. Under the gun, bet $65 after it is checked to him. Action does fold around to the cutoff player. He ends up putting the call in for $65, and it gets to me. I think people can easily have a flush draw on this board, or they could have four or five, you know, things like that, like a pair in a straight draw. So I make the calls well. My sevens may be good. Someone may have a set. Someone may have an over pair. But for 65 bucks, considering that the cutoff didn't raise, like I said, they could have flush draws, all kind of stuff. I think I have to see one more card. What's funny about this hand is the under the gun player bet 65 bucks and he only has $5 behind. So kind of strange. Ten of clubs peels off on the turn. He goes all in for $5. Cutoff makes the call. I make the call as well. The cutoff just calling makes me feel confident. He doesn't have the flush, but the under the gun player may. So when the queen of diamonds peels off on the river and he checks to me, I don't see any point in betting. I don't know what hand that I beat will call me. So I check it behind as well. Let the table know that I have pocket sevens. And somehow, some way, it's a winning hand. <laughs> someone had a three and someone had a four or something, I believe. So someone had a top pair. Uh, and yeah, we end up winning this $300 pot to start the night. Not what I expected at all, but not complaining about the results. 300 bucks coming our way. On to the next one. All right, for our next one, we are in the hijack. There's a five and $10 button straddle. Look down and see King Quinn offsuit. Not too bad of a hand. I definitely enjoy that. You can do all kinds of fun things with this hand. You can raise, you can call, you can fold. Folding seems ridiculous. But anyways, like I said, five and ten dollar button shrouds. Button ends up folding. Small blind and big blind player make the call. Action does fold around. Eventually it does get back to the low jack or middle position player. And she decides to put in ten dollars for the call. I have an option here. I have a couple options actually. So after she makes the call, I can easily raise because I have a very strong premium hand or I can just call. I decided to just call because the player to my left was being extremely action heavy. He was looking at one card and just going with it. Now, this sounds great. He goes all in for 125. This sounds great. But this man was hitting nonstop. I mean, he could not miss a flop. So even though I am pretty sure he's only looked at one card, the fact that he hasn't missed a single flop is insane. One of the hands he looked at and saw queen, flop top set, stack two people. I mean, it, he's flopping everything he looks at. It, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. He only has 125 in his stack right now. But trust me, this man has been on fire. So when action folds back around to me, which it eventually does, I have a decision to make. No, I'm kidding. I snap call. I snap call, guys. There's no decision. If he's got me beat, he's got me beat. I, I couldn't wait to get my money in. He shows an eight. So I show him I show him the king of hearts. I'm like, hey, we're ahead. We're ahead. So king versus an eight, not too bad. He decides uh, he wants to rip it this time. I asked him, I say, hey, what do you want to do? Once or twice. He normally goes twice, but he's been losing some hands uh, recently. So he decides to rip and I say, oh, all good. Like, let's rip it. I'm fine with that. So the dealer rips out the flop in the turn in the river. It comes king five. No, I'm sorry. It comes jack six, eight, king, queen. So I ended up getting two pair on the river. He actually had an ace under there. So he was ahead and we had to catch up. So luckily we did win a $280 pot. That allowed along with the other 300 one. Not bad, first two hands. Let's see if it continues and on to the next one. 
We're in the big blind for this one. Look down and see Pocket Five, Cinco Cinco, Cinco de Mayo, Pocket Feezies. Uh, yeah, it's Pocket Fives, guys. Anyways, under the gun plus one, raise it up to $15. Mill position, player makes the call, hijack makes the call as well. And then it kind of gets to the small blind player, the player to my direct right. She makes the call, and I gotta be honest, she's a very nice lady, super nice lady playing to my right but she is a talker. She talks and forgets it's her action, forgets it's her turn. So we end up waiting on her quite a bit throughout the game. That being said, it doesn't matter. We're all having a good time. It's not a big deal, but, but does slow it down a little bit. I make the call, show the player to my left my cards because we're all friends here. I say, hey, you want to see the winning hand before anyone else? Ha, 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 Nostradamus over here. Boom, king five deuce. We flop a set, boys. Two diamonds on the board. Very wet texture. I check in flow to that under the gun plus one player because he has been very aggressive with his bets. He has been betting very large when he hits and he raised preflop. So I think that king is in his range and I think he will bet it. Look at that. I'm just, you know, I just know everything. He bets $75. He bets the pot on this flop. Mill position goes all in for $85. I was not expecting that. Action does fold back around to me after this, and I'm kind of in a tough spot. I want to raise, but my stack size is a little strange to raise. So I really, kinda, I just kind of don't know what to do. Do I just smooth call and peel off a turn? I don't think that's bad, but I do want to charge any diamond draw that's trying to get there. So I kind of want to raise to, eh, I could see it going either way. I end up going all in for 420, and this was a mistake. I forgot I had those green chips on top of my stack. I thought I only had 300, which I think jamming 300 is fine here. I think jamming 420 is a little excessive. Um, yeah. Oopsie daisy. Under the gun plus one is in the tank though, so maybe, maybe I made a good mistake. Maybe it looks like a flush draw. Maybe it looks like a bluff. Definitely not what I meant to do. Um, so I put up on the screen for you guys, there's 320 in the pot with my bet added and not adding the excess. So with the excess, it's only a $335 more he would have to call on top of what he has in there. So it's basically a pot size raise, not horrible. But with that being said, I still think it's a little bit too large to basically three bet on the flop. I just think, I think it shows way too much strength. Um, I would have much rather had I remembered my actual stack size. I know, just look, it's there. Okay, hush, we all make mistakes. But had I seen I had those green chips on top, I think I would just raise to 150. That way I can put 150 out there. I have 250 behind, ship it all in on any turn card. I don't care if the flush comes in. It is what it is. Hopefully I pair up if he has a flush. But that being said, this is what I did. I'm not happy with the play, but you know, we can't all be perfect like you guys in the comment section. He does end up folding. Unfortunately, I lost some money on that one because he had more money than me. Put out my chips. My opponent says that they want to rip it. As you guys know, that is perfectly fine. I have no problem ripping it or running it multiple times. Feels like when I run it multiple times, they always catch up. So hopefully ripping it will work in my favor. Turn comes out and says three of diamonds. Perfect. Flush came in. And then the queen of spades. Luckily, our opponent just has king deuce. So only top pair with a weak kicker. Well, I guess he flopped top and bottom pair if I'm being more honest with myself. Luckily, we did flop middle set. So very much a cooler for him. Sadly, he did not win. Happily, we did win. Scooping this $300 plus dollar pot and moving on to the next hand. We find ourselves with yet another $5 button straddle. In case you guys can't tell by now, I do like to straddle. Look down, see Ace three offsuit, the big blind under the gun player calls, and the hijack calls as well. Cutoff decides $5 is not quite enough, so she is going to bump it up. Now, it's not going to be a crazy raise, mind you, but a raise nonetheless. She makes it $10. Guys, I tell you this all the time, or at least I try to. Do not min click if you are going to raise. Raise like an adult, please. Everyone makes a call, so we're going five ways to the flop that has been slightly bloated for no reason, in my opinion. Make it 25, something like that, so you can fold out the things like ace three offsuit, hence my hand, all those sort of things. Flop comes out. Jack, ace, nine with two spades. Very wet board, we flop top pair. So I'm not feeling too bad, but not feeling too great when the hijack bets $20. 
Cutoff makes the call. I have top pair. I can't fold yet. There's spades, flush draws, all kind of stuff. So I make the call. Big blind makes the call. And the end of the gun player decides to get out of the way. Turn comes, and in my opinion, it changes absolutely nothing because it is the seven of diamonds. I guess it does bring in eight, ten, but I'm not thinking anybody has that. Hijack bets $25. If you're wondering why I don't think anybody has eight, ten, it's simply for the fact that I cannot beat eight, ten. So if they have it, I will be drawing dead, and that would make me want to fold. And I don't want to fold. So I make the call for $25, action gets it back around to the big blind player. He counts out some chips and throws them into the middle as well. $205 in this pot, and we're going to the river, which is the six of clubs. Once again, a card that, in my opinion, changes absolutely nothing. Now, if it does get checked me, I'm 100% checking back. But when the hijack bets $60, I'm feeling sick to my stomach. He is taking an extremely strong line. And it definitely feels like he could have me beat with a better ace. Ace three is not the best ace in the world, in case you were wondering. That's why I'm here to give you guys this amazing commentary and help improve your poker play. But with all that being said, like I was saying before, there are missed flush draws, miss straight draws. So if he was on one of those and did a three barrel bluff, if I call and the big blind player folds, who I am kind of concerned with, I think he could have a better ace. Uh, hopefully he folds after I call because there's a lot of pressure on him. Check my cards again, making sure I do in fact have a top pair just in case I need to show it. Eventually, a big blind player does come to a decision though, and that is to return his cards to the dealer. The opponent lets me know that I'm good. He missed, so I show my cards that I hit the ace, and we're taking down a $325 pot. Let's go, baby. On to the next one. All right, guys, we have been on a roll. What better way to keep it going than to look down and see Ace-King offsuit from the big blind. There's a $5 button straddle. Small blind player makes a call. I raise it up to $75. Under the gun player calls and action folds around. Now, Ace-King offsuit is one of those hands where I'm not afraid to get it all in. If he had a re-raised, I'm like, all right, cool, let's go. It's not a big deal. I will get all my money in the middle with Ace-King and hope that it hits because I value it that much. Now, let me know what you guys think of Ace King down in the comments. I really want to know, would you get it all in like 100 big blinds or something? Small blind makes a call and we're going three ways to the flop. Back to the hand, guys. Flop comes out and it is not the worst flop in the world, but it's not amazing. It is Jack 10 for a rainbow. So we have a gutter ball to the nuts, plus we have two overs. So an action checks to me from the small blind. Even though this board hits both of their ranges very well, I have all the aces, I have all the kings, so I think betting on this is not a bad idea. And that's what I do. I bet for $50 and I immediately regret life when the under the gun player raises it up to 200. <sighs> Why couldn't I just have checked? You know, I could have checked. He bet the same thing I bet, and he bets like 50, you know, 60, something. I don't know. He bets a lot. But anyways, the small blind player folds, and I immediately muck my cards because ace-king is no good in this spot. He flips over his cards, let us know that he did, in fact, have a set of 10. So good for him. Ace-king up in flames, sending $5 up in flames. On to the next hand. Yep, sometimes premiums like ace-king just don't work out, so you have to resort to your bag of tricks and whip out the old 3-4 suited. You know, $2, psh. Yes, please. Definitely calling $2. I'm a limpy Lou. Okay, I'm not worried about nothing. Hijack decides to raise up to $10. That's not that much. I ain't worried about that. Cutoff makes the call. A button makes the call. And like I said, $10, not a big deal. Small blind, though, raises it up to 20 bucks. Now, I'm only in for two, so I don't really have to call this. I mean... Do I want to call 18 just because I'm on tilt because my ace king did not work out? These are the questions professional, professional poker players like myself ask ourselves every day. Do we want to tilt or not? And I have to be honest with you guys. When the big blind make the call, you can bet your bottom fucking dollar that I'm going to tilt this money off. 20 bucks, goodbye. Calling that shit with 3-4 suited. Hijack and cut off both make the call. Button makes the call as well. We are going to be going five ways to this flop. $100 in the middle with three, four of spades. Now, 
If I had to pick a flop, this would probably be it. Five, seven, ace, two spades. We are double guttered with a flush draw. Oh, yeah, baby. That's about as good as you can get with three, four of spades. Deuce gives us a straight. Six gives us a straight. And any spade gives us a flush. So when the big blind decides to bet $25, I make the call. Hijack makes the call. Cutoff makes the call. Yep, we're all calling here except for the button player. He does decide to make the fold. Why? Because he's a smart player. That's why. He knows we have three, four, and he's up against the freaking ropes. Small blind player gets out of the way as well. So we are going to be four ways to the next card. $200 in the middle. Ew, seven of hearts. That's uh, it's not a very good card for our hand. i got to be honest with you. Um, yeah. Could have hit half the world in a seven of hearts comes. Anyways, cutoff goes all in for $85. Yep, that's a, it's a little less than half pot. Not that crazy. Nothing too, nothing too wild here, boys. $85, uh, I don't know. Am I getting the right price? First, we have to wait and see what big blind player does. He only has $55, so he's not going to be raising. But if he calls here, I think I have to call because I'm getting the right odds to call at that point. So I'm kind of hoping he folds. I'm kind of hoping he calls. Don't really know where my head's at. All I know is that all of this started because ace, king, offsuit, whiffed. That's all I know. And I am even more pissed off. If I miss this draw, I'm just going to flip the table. I'm being honest with you guys. Like double gutter flush draw, it's the same as open-ended. You know how many outs? That, that's like a million outs. Anyways, big blind calls for $55. Like I said, since he made the call, I have to make the call as well. So I call the $85. Action is back around to the hijack player. He thinks about it for a second. I have no idea what he has. I'm be honest. I'm not doing any analysis in my head right now. I'm not like, does someone have a boat? Am I drawing dead? Hijack makes a call. Someone could have a flush draw, if I'm being honest. Um, someone could have a seven. I don't think anybody has aces full. Someone could have five seven, I suppose. That makes sense. But I don't think a seven's too likely. I mean, was a seven of diamonds and a seven of clubs are the only ones available? Eh, I, I think you would have seen a raised pre-flop, something like that. So, River comes out. It is the bank. That's right, boys. Six of clubs. We hit one of our double gutters to make the straight. And the other player is all in, by the way. I don't know if I announced that. So, I bet $200. It is just myself and the hijack player. And he goes into the tank. And you know what that means? Yep. That means we have the best hand. Even if we do not win the main or the side pot, if he calls this, we can mitigate our losses by $200. And I'll tell you what, we only put 185 into the middle before this. So if we can win this $200 side side pot, then we can at least break even if we lose the rest. That's my thought process. Also, $200 is less than half pot. I feel that's very reasonable to make a call with an ace here. Reasonable bet, reasonable call. If you have a seven, you're definitely calling. It just feels like the right thing to do. And if he had a flush draw that missed, he's folding regardless. He's not going to call with a flush draw. So $200, I feel, is very reasonable. Probably could have gone more. But the fact that he's in the tank for this long, I feel like it's the perfect price. With all that being said, if he does call this, we can win the outside. That's what he does. He makes the call. I let him know we have a straight. Of course, we win the outside. The only question is, do we win the main pot and the other outside pot? So we are at least breaking even $910 in this pot. The cutoff player flashes his cards to his buddy next to him, flips him up. He had a seven, but he did not boat up. Oh, RIP for him. That was a good turn for him but better river for us big blind player never shows his cards we wait for him for about an hour he just kind of sits there wallowing in you know just the uh i hate poker moment we've all been there but with that being said there's 910 dollars in this pot and we are winning every single penny of it this is why i play things like three four suited and i don't play ace king let me tell you how much money ace king won in this pot fucking zero that's how much three four nine hundred and ten you can take your ace king and you can shove it where the sun don't shine because i don't want that hand no more i'm only playing less than premium hands from this day until the day i rip ace king what two dollars nope 
muck that shit away. I ain't gonna be playing no ace king. You guys can have that. Give me that three four suited. Give me that five seven off suit. You can give me those beautiful hands, and you can keep the other ones. All right, nine hundred and ten dollars coming our way. On to the next hand. All right, guys, we are in the small blind. Look down and see pocket threes. Not quite three four suited, but still. It has a three in it, so it must be good. Under the gun plus one, raises it up to $10. Gets all the way over to one seat to his left middle position. They make the call. Low jack raises it up to $30. And yeah, it's Texas. People like to gamble, gamble. Hijack player thinks about it for a second before he decides he's going to make the call. It actually does fold around to me after this. I only have $1 in, so I'm going to fold. I'm, I'm going to call because $29 is not a big deal to me, evidently. Uh, under the gun plus one player makes the call as well. Mill position player thinks about it for a second before he throws in his chips. And we're going to be going five ways to this flop. 150 in the middle already. Kind of want to see a three. And when the flop comes out, 9, 10, bank three. That's right. We flop bottom set. No need to bet here. People can have aces, kings, all kind of things. So I check it under the gun plus one, bet $75. And shockingly enough, everyone else folds. I got to be honest. I thought someone would be calling with this with the raise and the re-raise. I guess people had ace, king. I mean, you have jack, queen here. You're calling. So what do you have? Like ace, queen, ace, king, ace, jack, I guess. Maybe folds here for 75. I don't know. Very strange, but I just smooth call. No need to spring the trap yet. Not really worried about too many turn cards. Turn comes out, and it's the seven of diamonds, bringing in a backdoor flush draw as well as completing jack eight. I don't think he has that, so I check to him. He bets $100. I Hollywood for just a second before announcing that I am, in fact, all in. And he has $300 in, in front of him, so it's $300 effective. I have him covered. He makes a call, $900 in the pot. This guy goes once all the time. Ten of clubs comes on the river, giving us a full house, only fading 10-9, and I guess 9-7, I suppose. Could have a set of nines, but it is not that kind of cooler. The cooler is on his end, unfortunately for him. He puts his chips in the mill, asks for some more chips, mucks his cards to the dealer, and we're taking down a $900 pot. Let's go. Hits just keep on coming. On to the next hand, y'all. Oh, it's a good day. All right, guys, we have done enough hold'em. It is time for some Omaha. We're actually starting on the flop on this hand. There's about six players. There's a $5 button straddle. I look down and see three, eight, queen, queen. Flop comes out six, queen, king with two clubs. It's kind of awkward when you're on the flop and grab your phone to start recording, but I check because I'm trying to be sneaky. Also want to see a clean turn. Button bets $20, though. He has other intentions in mind. Small blind flicks in a call, if I could talk. Big blind makes the call as well. Under the gun player makes the call, and the action is on me. So I went from checking to want to see a clean turn to potting on this, making it 140 bucks. I figure if there's this much action and I can increase it you know, to 140 to a reasonable amount where people will actually have a chance of folding because anything less than that, the entire table is calling and I'm having to fade the entire deck. I would rather do it like this and push people out once they've had a few callers, things like that. I don't know. Just feel like it could have been the right move. Uh, checking can't be bad either, but when I can only pot to 30, it's just not enough to get people to fold. Hijack goes all in for $150. I'm sorry, the button does. And action gets to a small blind player. He decides to muck his cards. A big blind player does as well. Under the gun flicks in his remaining chips for 60 bucks. And we have 430 in the pot. We discuss how many times we would like to go. Per usual, I don't care. We end up going twice. At this point, I have no idea what anyone has, but I'm assuming I'm fading straight and flush draws. Uh, you know, maybe two pair, king six, king queen, something like that, I suppose could be in there as well. But $430 in the pot, and I am wanting to see these runouts. Dealers getting the pots right and the side pots right, and then we're going to see what is going to come. First board comes, and it is the boom. 
Okay, okay, he's taking a lot longer than I thought. There you go, that's the boom. Man, my camera angle is fuzzy. Ace of spades, nine of hearts, so you guys can uh, understand what that is. Three of hearts on bottom, followed by the two of hearts. Flush doesn't come in, but jack 10 comes in, so if someone had the straight draw with the jack 10 there, they end up getting there. I show my cards, I have a set of queens. It's actually good to scoop the side pot. He had a uh, king, jack, jack, and I didn't see his other card. But we scooped the side pot, now it's down to the main pot flips over his cards he was the one with a flush draw so we scooped that as well 430 dollars coming my way i don't have to chop shit let's go run into twice sometimes can work in your favor on to the final hand of the night do -do -do -do. Do -do 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 -do. The final hand now all right guys we look down and see jack queen suited i am in the big blind Yes, indeed. Under the gun has a straddle of five dollars, and we get some callers. Uh oh, button goes all in for fifty-five. It's kind of towards the end of the night. Fifty-five is not really that much money, so I make the call because you know why not? It does fold until it gets to the under the gun player. He puts in fifty-five for the call as well, and we are now waiting on the other players to act. Jack Queen suited is actually up there on one of my favorite hands. Oh, guys, by the way, if you're new to the channel and you've made it this far, let me know in the comments. Say, hey, I'm a real one. If you've been watching and you made it this far, let me know in the comments. Also, if you're new, do me a favor, drop a sub. It helps out the channel a ton, trying to grow. That is if you enjoy the content. If you don't, don't do it. It's free to do, but it's not, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Flop comes out 3, 8, 10 with two spades. I check. The other player bets $75. There's 175 in there, and I feel like I am getting reversed implied odds to call. That means if I hit my card like the bink nine of spades here, I will get paid. Unfortunately, it does go check, check. I guess the spade scared him. And now we went to the river, which is the ace of clubs. I think about it for a second, and I feel like I have no other choice but to bet. 225 seems like a good bet, and my opponent goes into the tank i have no idea what he has i think he had a 10 and maybe this a scares him i'm not really sure but all i know is that he is thinking for a long time maybe the third spade scared him maybe he's afraid to have a flush um i don't think i check a flush i could check a flush but eventually he does come to a decision and that is to fold sadly he makes the fold the correct fold i let the other opponent know that i do have the straight he says that i'm good and for the final hand we're taking down a 325 dollar pot all in all not a bad night let's go to the outro to see how much i actually made and see what i thought of my play all right guys so the number you all want to know if you stayed this far i was in the game for one bullet 300 dollars bullet ended up cashing out 1600 so i was up 300 now how do i think i played i think i played pretty good other than the ace king which i played fine i think c betting on the flops okay you don't have to all the time could have checked but i don't think it's like some horrible egregious thing where it just is unredeemable uh, with that being said there were some hands that didn't make the vlog i ended up losing 150 in an omaha hand i had the same straight against someone having the nut straight he only had 150 and just kind of is what it is sometimes you lose those uh other than that losing some money here and there just to see flops but that's where some of the money came from because i know i had a lot of big winning pots all in all but yeah 1300 not a bad win let me know what your best win was on the one two one three tables uh and if you played larger stakes let me know the best win you have down there in the comments too that'd be awesome but till next time have fun be safe and good luck on the felt